Good evening, men of God. We are thrilled and excited to welcome you to the first ever Southern Union Virtual Men's Convention. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us this evening, and we know that you won't be disappointed. I believe that men are the foundation of our homes, churches, and society itself. In the times we are living, we need strong Christian men more than ever before. Men's Convention is a time when we can join together to inspire, support, and challenge men to become all that God designed them to be. In this virtual convention, we have assembled top-notch inspirational speakers, practical and informative seminars, and uplifting and spirit-reviving music. We will be featuring men's ministry leaders from throughout the Southern Union, as well as representatives from the Caribbean. Our theme this year is Trust the Pilot. We have been through a lot this past year, and at times it may have seemed the way forward was uncertain. But the Bible has told us that we must trust the pilot, our captain and our guide, Jesus Christ. And then we can be sure we will make it through the stormy skies to the sunny shores of our final destination. Each of the messages we share will show us how we can better trust the pilot and make sure that we can get safely home. In a few moments, we will be blessed by an inspiring and outstanding message from Dr. Carlton Bird. Dr. Bird has a remarkable and outstanding ministry. He is currently the speaker director of Breath of Life Television Ministries, as well as the senior pastor of Oakwood University Church. He is an outstanding evangelist and soul winner who has brought over 20,000 people to the Lord through baptism. He is well known for his community involvement and he has established several community outreach centers valued in the millions of dollars. He has received numerous awards and honors, including the coveted Chosen Pastor Award in 2007 for the Atlanta region, the NAACP Pastor of the Year Award for the Huntsville-Madison County, Alabama branch in 2016, and was inducted into the Martin Luther King Board of Preachers in Moorhead College in Atlanta, 2008. We are excited to hear what he has to say this evening, and I know that no one will be disappointed. Immediately after our sermon tonight at 8.15, we will have our first series of seminars presenting an array of interesting, practical, and informative topics pertaining to issues men have to deal with. You will certainly want to stay tuned for these. Tomorrow morning, our convention continues beginning at 8.30 a.m. in the morning with an inspiring message from the North American Family Life Ministries Director, Claudio Consuegra. He is also in charge of men's ministries for the North American Division. At 9.45, we will offer another opportunity to attend one of our many virtual seminars, and at 11 o'clock a.m., we will be blessed by another sermon by Dr. Carlton Bird. Later in the day, beginning at 2 o'clock p.m., we will have more inspirational messages presented by Roger Hernandez and Claudio Consuegra, as well as an informative panel discussion on how to start a men's ministry department in your church and how to make your men's ministry program more effective if you already have one. We will end the day with a capstone message by Roger Hernandez, and you won't want to miss that. As you can see, it's going to be a jam-packed day full of sermons, seminars, great music, and helpful information. Please be sure that you stay tuned for the entire day. You won't want to miss a single thing. Let us pray. Holy Father, this evening we are so grateful for this opportunity, Father, to be able to seek you in prayer from the different locations that we may be sitting. Lord, this evening, we just want to um, praise you and glorify you. Father, very special prayer for all of the men that are present, that are listening, Father. I pray for their families, Lord Jesus, that you may bless their families in a mighty way, Lord. You know that families are being challenged in our days, Lord, and uh, the enemy is wanting to, to take our families apart. But Lord, you are the almighty God, and we depend on you, knowing that through you, 
our families will 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 be intact father lord we pray for our children in, in in particular because you know that once again the enemy is 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 after them he wants to lead them in the wrong path and and um and and thus leading them to a destructive path father lord please a special blessing that your holy angels may be around all of our children lord that your holy spirit may be around our families father and a special blessing for all the men as they um, represent you in their homes father give them lord the the blessing of of uh, leading their families in in the, in a closer relationship with you this evening, Father, we are blessed, we are privileged to have uh, Pastor Bird, who will be addressing the subject for this evening, Father. I pray that you may give him wisdom, understanding, knowledge, Father. I pray that it will be your Holy Spirit speaking through him as he addresses us men. Please anoint his lips. May glory be to you, for it's in Jesus I most humbly pray. Amen. One day as I was a walking, walking down the lonesome road, when the Spirit spoke unto me, and it filled my heart with joy. One day as I was a walking, walking down the lonesome road, I surely thank God I'm in His care. Once I'm in His care, in my Savior's care. Once I'm in His care, in His care. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus got His arms all around me. No evil thought can harm me for I surely thank God I'm in His Praise the Lord, brothers. I'm grateful that we can be a part of this Southern Union Conference Virtual Men's Convention. Trust the pilot. I, I regret we can't be together in fellowship because a part of convention is the time to fellowship with brothers, particularly at a men's ministries convention. But thank you for the invitation, the Southern Union Conference, and also most specifically uh, the Florida Conference. Pastor Schiffbauer, thank you so very much, you and your team. Uh, you've done a wonderful job. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Happy Sabbath to everyone. I'm ready to get in the Word of God and preach this message on uh, this evening, and I know God is going to bless in a mighty way. Let's talk to the Lord, and then we're going to talk to you. Father in heaven, we thank you so much once again that we can say a word for you. 
Thank you for this men's ministry's virtual convention. Though we can't be face to face and fellowshipping one with another, Lord, there's valuable information, valuable insight that you have given through speakers today, men speaking to men. I pray, Lord, now as we go into your word this evening, that you would speak to us. Make your way in your word clear. Hide me behind your cross and forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. In harmony with our theme, trust the pilot, and and tomorrow we'll talk more about that. Tonight, I want to challenge you with the subject, get out of the boat. Get out of the boat. I'm coming from the book of Matthew, and I want you to turn there with me. Matthew chapter 14, and we're going to begin at verse number 22. Matthew chapter 14. Verse number 22, and I'm going to read to verse 33, and I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. So if you're watching on your screen, you may be looking at your own Bible, but if you're looking at the Bible we have on the screen, it is the King James Version. I'm going to read in your hearing, Matthew chapter 14, verse number 22, the word of God says, and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain part to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway. Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come, Jesus did. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art son of God. Get out of the boat. Let me try it and start this way. I fly a lot of planes. I am a frequent flyer member of Delta Airlines. So if all I can fly is Delta, that's all I want to fly because I'm trying to build my frequent flyer mouths. And you know what? God is good to me because you know what? I'm at diamond status now. And because I'm at diamond status with Delta, you know what that means? Free Upgrades. That's right. Free upgrades. Hallelujah. Don't be mad. Don't hate that I'm in first class and you're sitting in coach. Don't hate. Just celebrate because if you keep flying, it's only a matter of time before you're going to get to diamond status and upgraded as well. Amen. Now, when I fly, I trust the pilot of the aircraft. I trust that the pilot, that he or she has gone to flight school. I trust that they have experience. I trust that they know what they're doing because if they didn't know what they were doing, they wouldn't be flying the plane. I don't think Delta would have them flying the plane. But when I'm up 36,000 feet in the air, that plane starts rocking. And sometimes we start experiencing turbulence. It's not the easiest time for me to trust the pilot. You see, trust is easy when everything is calm, when everything is stable, when everything is peaceful and still, but when it's rocky, when it's wobbly, when it's choppy, windy, and stormy, it's not as easy to trust the pilot. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Life is rocky, and stormy right now. From the coronavirus pandemic to the social unrest we're witnessing to everything in between, we are living right now in turbulent times. 
Reliving a time that is distinctively different than anything we've ever experienced before. Times are getting rough and times are getting tough. We've got wars and rumors of wars. Terrorist attacks are the norm. Hurricanes, earthquakes, tornadoes are rampant. Gunfire is commonplace. Death, disease, and destruction, they are all widespread. COVID-19 is no joke, and we don't know when it's going to be over. The proliferation of sexual deviancy and variety is rampant. The forces of evil are intensifying their attack on the forces of good. Marriages are in trouble. Our children are wild and out of control. But in the name of Jesus, it's time for the men of God to stand. The men of God cannot roll over and play dead. Men of God can't take it and just say simply, this is the way it's going to be. Men of God, we can't be scared and intimidated. Men of God, we can't be bullied and frightened. But men of God, we've got to fight. Fight for our marriages. Fight for our children. Fight for our peace of mind. God has called us to be warriors, not wimps. He's called us to be soldiers and not scaredy cats. We must show some courage. We must show some holy boldness. We must show some guts. And God is calling men. God is calling us brothers to show some fight. Show some leadership. Don't be afraid of your situation. Don't be swayed by others, but show some fight. Matthew. Chapter 14, you know the story. Jesus has just fed 5,000 men plus women and children with two fish and five loaves of bread. After feeding the 5,000, Jesus sends his disciples ahead of him in a boat. And then he dismisses the people and he goes up alone into a mountain to pray. And somebody knows what I'm talking about because sometimes you've got to excuse yourself from everybody else and you just got to have some you and Jesus time because having a little talk with Jesus makes it right. The disciples have been in their boat for about seven or eight hours on a journey that should have taken two or three hours. And now it's about three in the morning and they're battling a storm with winds and waves. They've been battling this storm all night long, fearful for their lives, and they now think, the Bible says, that they see a ghost walking on water. But it's not a ghost. It's Jesus. Somebody knows he's an ever-present help in time of trouble, that he may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. Jesus says, ego a me, which is interpreted, it is I, be not afraid. Ironically, these are the same words God used to declare his name to Moses at the burning bush. Ego a me, it is I, be not afraid, I am. So then what Jesus is really saying to the disciples, what Jesus is really saying is, aha, ain't no need to worry because I am that I am is here. Now remember, Jesus is omniscient, which means he's all-knowing. And he's an all-knowing God. And it was Jesus who sent the disciples, remember, to the water in the first place. He sent them to the boat first place after he finished providing the fish and, and loaves of bread to the people, which means Jesus knew the disciples would be at sea for a while. Jesus knew a storm was coming. Jesus knew it was going to be windy. Jesus knew the waters would be choppy. Jesus knew the water would be rocky. Jesus knew that the wind would be blowing and the storm would be coming. He knew they would be battling the sea all night long. So then why would Jesus send his disciples into a situation that he knew would be difficult? Brothers, there are times in our lives I've learned that the Lord will send us into storms so he can grow our faith, grow our courage, grow our trust, grow our confidence so we can step out in faith in what he's calling us to do. 
You see, just because you have a relationship with God doesn't mean you won't go through any trouble. Those that live godly lives will suffer persecution. I believe I've got somebody who's watching right now who knows you can believe in God and still face turbulence in your life. Just because you're in a relationship with God doesn't mean you won't go through anything. You can go to church and still get cancer. You can return tithe and offering and still lose your house. You can pray and still get the coronavirus. You can go to a family life retreat and still get divorced. You can read Adventist home and your children will still go left. Bad stuff happens to good people. Trouble will come in spite of your relationship with God. But I don't know about you, but I've still got to trust the pilot. I still got to trust God. And I've got to believe in a God who can do things I can't do. Who can reach things I can't reach. Who can move things I can't move. Who can give me things I can't give myself. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You don't prove how much faith you have when you've got money in the bank. You prove how much faith you have when you don't have anything in the bank. When your car note is due and you don't have a dollar to your name. Sometimes I've learned that God sends us into storms in life. And sometimes people create their own storms and then get mad when it rains. God sent the disciples into the boat. God sent the disciples into the water. Jesus is walking on the water. But while the other disciples don't recognize him, Peter does. And Peter wants to go to Jesus because he knows that no matter how dark the night no matter how high the waves, no matter how strong the wind, no matter how wet the water, no matter how choppy the sea, Peter knew that it was safer out of the ship in a storm with Jesus than being in a ship in a storm without Jesus. Somebody's going to get this in a minute. I can hear the disciples saying to Peter, Peter, you can't walk on water. Peter, it's impossible. Peter, you'll drown. Peter, you'll get wet. Peter, it's dangerous. Peter, the boat is the safest place to be. But in the text, Jesus says, come. The laws of storm and rain say stay in the boat. But Jesus says, come. The apostles, the disciples say, but you're going to die. But Jesus says, come. Peter decides, I'm not listening to the disciples. I'm going to listen to Jesus. He shows some faith. He shows some trust. He gets out of the boat, puts his life at risk, holds his hand out to Jesus, and he begins to walk on water. Now, we all know this story. This is not revolutionary. We all know this story, and, and we condemn Peter because Peter, the story teaches, te takes his eyes off of Jesus, and the Bible says that Peter begins, and that's critical, begins to sink, that Peter had a lapse of faith is why he began to fall, and even the Bible records Jesus as saying to Peter, O oh, ye of little faith. But while we condemn Peter, let's give Peter a little credit because at least Peter got out of the boat. The rest of the disciples stayed in the boat. A little faith is better than no faith at all. If Peter had little faith, then the other disciples had no faith at all because if you remain in the boat, you will never know what it's like to walk on water. Being safe is easy. It's not hard work. Do what everyone else is doing. Do what everyone else has done. But change is hard. At least Peter got out of the boat, which is more than what the other disciples did. How many of us stay in the boat without even trusting God and exercising faith and walking in the fullness of what God has for our lives? But we're creatures of habit. We do things a certain way. We're comfortable with doing it that way. We put the toilet paper roll on a certain way. Some of us over, some of us under. Change is a hard thing. We drive to work a certain way. Some of us use the interstate. Some of us use streets. Some of us use back roads. Change is a hard thing. We make eggs a certain way. Some scrambled, some boiled, some sunny side up, some fried. Change is a hard thing. We do what we want because change is not easy, but the reality is we live in a changing world. We've gone from blackboards to chalkboards, chalkboards to whiteboards, whiteboards to smartboards, 
We've gone from record albums to eight track tapes to cassettes to CDs to MP3s to now downloads. We've gone from film strips to VHS tapes to DVDs to download streaming. We've gone from the rotary phone to the touch tone phone to the cell phone and now we deal with smartphones. We live in a changing world. Gone are the days when a pot was something you cooked in. The Coke was a cold drink. That a weed was an unwanted plant you pulled out of your garden. That snakes were reptiles who crawled on the ground. That decisions were made by any, many, many more. And the only race issues we dealt with were who ran faster. We live in a changing world. And how many of us, men, Frown on new ideas and methods simply because we've never done it that way. Lunacy is defined as doing the same things over and over and over again, but yet you expect a different result. But you'll never see new oceans unless you have the courage to lose sight of the shore. It's all right to be cautious, but a turtle never gets anywhere until he sticks his head out. The blind activist right here from the state of Alabama where I live, the activist and author Helen Keller, she was born blind and she was asked, what could be worse than being born blind? She said, having sight but no vision. Don't be afraid to go out on a limb. Don't be afraid to stick your head out. Don't be afraid to try something different. Don't be afraid, brothers, to get out of the boat. Pastor Bird, where are you going with all of this? In the day and age in which we live, we need courageous men, bold men, visionary men, men who aren't afraid to trust God in turbulent times. It was Ellen White who said it best in the book Education, the greatest one of the world is the want of men. Men who will not be bought or sold. Men who in their inmost souls are true and honest. Men who do not fear to call sin by its right name. Men whose conscience is as true to duty as the needle is to pole. Men who will stand for the right, though the heavens might fall. Our world has changed, but our churches and our ministries still have a mission to take the gospel to the world to expedite Jesus' second coming. But brothers, we can no longer pay it safe. We can no longer be cautious. People are not going to just walk in and join our churches. That's not going to happen today. As we move further in 2021, we've got to be radical. We've got to sound the loud cry. We've got to be courageous even in turbulent times. We've got to be willing to get out of the boat. Jesus is soon to come. If the enemies of God are rising up, then the men of God ought to rise up. Times have changed. Philosophies are different. Attitudes are not the same. Respect levels are vastly different than what they were 30, 20, 10, even five years ago. Regard for whom human life is not what it used to be. God's got to do a new thing, and a new thing means change. A change in our thinking. A change in our ideas. A change in our methods. Then let me be clear to you this evening. The world may be changing, but God's truth is still the same. God's principles are still the same. God's message of salvation is still the same. God says, I am the Lord, I change not. But God does use different methods to save us. Remember, in Noah's day, the message was salvation, but the method was you got to get in the boat, you got to get in the ark. Understand, in Moses' day, the children of Israel, the message was salvation, but the method was you have to put blood on your doorposts. In our day, the message is salvation, but the method says if we just confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But are we so caught up in our past that we're not ready to take God's message, brothers, to the future? Are we so enslaved in the way It used to be that we can't be liberated by the way it ought to be. Are we so trapped in our customs and our traditions and and our practices that we're paralyzed for the need for seeker-sensitive, relevant ministry in our postmodern world? God wants to do a new thing. Now, there's a danger in looking back. 
living in the past and not embracing the future. Too many churches, too many institutions, too many schools have allowed themselves to become shells of what they formerly were. Too many churches want to go on living in the past instead of thriving in the future. Let me help make this plain and share the story. So the story is told of two Buddhist monks, and these monks were walking in a thunderstorm. They walked upon a stream of water, and a beautiful young woman stood there wanting to cross the other side of this river stream, but she was afraid of the river's currents. So she asks one of the monks, so one of the monks rather asks her they say to the lady ma'am can I help you the woman replied I need to cross this stream so the monk, the monk picked up the young woman put her on his shoulders and then he carried the woman through the rushing waters and he put her down safely on the other side after he had done that he and his companion monk then went to the monastery but later that night the monk's companion said to him Brother, I have a bone to pick with you. As Buddhist monks, we have taken a vow not to look on a woman, much less touch her body. But back there by the river, you did both. The other monk then looked up and said, Brother, I put that woman down on the other side of the river, but you're still carrying her in your mind. How easy it is to become obsessed with your past at the expense of your future. God wants to do something new in the life of his church. God wants to do something new in the life of our communities. Folk are tired of revelation without relevance. Folk are tired of seeing the emphasis of policy placed over the needs of people. Folk are tired of never getting delivered from their problems. Folk are tired of being unable to come to a church where they can't share their burdens and problems simply because they're afraid of what other people might say about them after they've come clean. Folk want real, authentic, life-changing, soul-saving, scratching where people itch ministry. God wants to do a new thing. God wants to do a new thing in the life of his people, and he wants to begin with the man. The man. Progenitor of the human race. The man. Priest of the home. The man. Husband of a wife. The man. Father to his children. The man. Provider for his family. The man. Leader in the community, the man, brother in the church, men and especially young men, pull your pants up, comb your hair, hold your head up, stick your chest out, put one foot in front of the other. Young men, quit catching Z's when you ought to be making A's. Get your education, get a job, find a cure for cancer, fight social injustice, be about God's business. Lead and not follow. Get out of the boats. Brother man, you can do it. Now, before I take my seat, let me help you understand that this sermon is not an indictment against our past. This sermon is not a treatise against tradition. This sermon is not out with the old and in with the new. This sermon is not a discourse against our history, our legacy, our leaders, because I'm privileged to stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before me. But this sermon is a call to action, a call of reminder as to why we're here, what we're here to do, and where we're to go. A call to service that we must be about our father's business. A call to fight the injustices and inequities of the day. A call to trust God even in turbulent times. And this call begins with the man. Peter, get out of the boat. Peter, it's time to walk on water. Stop looking at the water. Stop touching the water. It's time to walk on water. But that's not how this story ends. Yes, Peter got out of the boat. But the Bible says, after he got out of the boat and he began to walk on water, the Bible says that he began to sink. Now, Bible theologians and enthusiasts, enthusiasts always argue about why he began to seek, sink. And Bible enthusiasts say he began to sink because he got distracted. Some say he got haughty. He took his eyes off Jesus. And while all of that or some of that might be true, I believe that Peter needed to sink in order to grow. 
You see, sometimes you have to sink in order to move to your next step of faith in Jesus Christ. Peter begins to sink, but then he cries three words. Peter says, Lord, save me. That was his prayer. Three simple words. Lord, save me. Which reminds me that it's not the length of your prayer, but it's the strength of your prayer. Lord, save me. Some people think we've got to pray these long, big words, sermonized prayers to get God's attention. But Peter didn't have time for prayer preliminaries. Peter didn't have time for a long discourse. Peter did not have time for flowery words because sometimes in this life, when you're facing in a storm and you're trying to call the pilot to set the storm straight and you're about to lose your mind, all you can do is say, Lord, save me. When the devil is messing with your mind, Lord, Lord, save me. When the devil is messing with your wife, Lord, save me. When the devil is messing with your children, Lord, save me. When you're stressed to the max, when you're pushed to the limit, Lord, save me. Let me give you some shouting news before I end. The Bible says it. Let me open it up again. The Bible says it, and it says it in verse number 30. The Bible says it in, in, in our text in verse number 30. Matthew 14, verse number 30. The word of God says, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. Somebody missed that. Let me try that again, brothers. The Bible says, Peter, beginning to sink. Somebody missed that. Let me try that one more time. Peter, beginning to sink. Now, I can't hear you. I can't see you. Maybe you're in the chat. Maybe you're talking back to me. But if we were all in church right now, somebody ought to say amen on that. Peter, beginning to sink. Can I tell you what the shouting news is tonight? It's the fact that the Bible says Peter beginning to sink, which means God didn't let Peter go under. (laughs) Somebody can testify tonight. I began to sink, but God didn't let me go under. I had financial trouble, but I didn't go under. I had sickness in my body, but I didn't go under. I lost my job, but I didn't go under. I had a habit that didn't seem like I could break it, but I didn't go under. I I lost my marriage, but I didn't go under. I lost my family, but I didn't go under. People were talking about me, but I didn't go under. And the good news tonight is, brothers, when you trust the pilot, when you exercise faith in God, when you get out of the boat, when you try something new, if you begin to sink, there is a savior. If you begin to drown, there is a deliverer. If you begin to go under, there is a go-between. If you begin to fall, there is a friend. If you begin to plunge, there is is a pilot and his name is Jesus. Jesus, sweet rose of Sharon. Jesus, lily of the valley. Jesus, bright in the morning star. Jesus, way maker. Jesus, problem solver. Jesus, burden bearer. Jesus, cancer killer. Jesus, coronavirus controller. Jesus, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me, now safe am I. Peter, get out of the boat. Show some courage. Quit playing it safe. Trust the pilot. And let me tell you something as I close. There will always be people telling you to stay in the boat. There will always be people telling you how foolish, how crazy, how dangerous it is to step out in faith, trust God, and get in the water. But I've learned this. 
the closer I get to God, the closer I am to God saving me. And when you look back over your life and you remember how Jesus rescued you, how Jesus delivered you, how Jesus saved you, you know that if he did it for you then, he'll do it for you now. Look at how many dark days you faced. Look at how many nights you cried yourself to sleep and your family didn't know it. Look how many times you got yourself in trouble and you didn't know how you were going to get out. But God made a way for you. God rescued you. And if he hasn't done it for you yet, keep on living. He'll do it. Just keep on living. Tonight, whatever you're going through, trust the pilot. Whatever you're going and dealing with in your boat, trust the captain. Whatever you're praying for, trust Jesus. And I'm a witness that he will see you through. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know the saith the Lord. You can trust the pilot and get out of the boat. Father in heaven, we thank you this evening for this word of challenge, this call to action. And because we trust you, Lord, we know we're going to be okay to get out of the boat. If we drown, and it looks like we're going to drown, there's a deliverer. If it looks like we're going to go under, there's a go-between. If it looks like we're going to fall, there's a friend. If it looks like we're going to plunge, there is a pilot. And we're glad to know it's you, oh Jesus. Continue to bless us during our time at this men's ministries convention, virtual though it may be. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Get out of the boat. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to our seminar sessions for our virtual convention. We have provided a wide variety of seminars from which you may choose. All of the seminars are live and interactive on Zoom. To access the live seminars, you will need a computer with a camera and a microphone or a smartphone with internet capabilities. To choose your seminars, simply go to men.floridaconference.com. Click on the convention seminars link and list of the seminars and the list of the seminars that will appear. Choose the seminars that you want to attend by clicking on the seminar's title, and this will take you to the Zoom account where the seminar is being presented. You will only be able to attend one seminar per session. However, all of the seminars will be available after our convention on the Florida Men's Ministry website, men.floridaconference.com under the tab videos. Feel free to watch all of them either individually or as a group. Enjoy.